I just want to say this to someone out there because if you suffer from depression and anxiety and you feel like you go through shit, baby, you are not alone, okay? Hey, what's up you guys? It's your girl Sierra and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that's a little bit on the touchy subject, but this is something that I constantly get asked in DMs as well as in comments on my videos, and that is mental health after weight loss surgery. You guys, I honestly feel like this topic just needs to be talked about so, so much just because if you guys haven't followed my beginning videos, I have always mentioned that after having weight loss surgery, it is a complete lifestyle change and it definitely affects your mental, physical, spiritual, everything. So I definitely want to talk and give you guys my side about that. Before I go ahead into that video, I do want to go ahead and start off with my stats just because I know that you guys always need to know the stats. So starting back. Back, um, about a year ago, a year and a month to be exact, I had my weight loss surgery April 1st, 2019, and my highest weight was 265 pounds, my surgery weight was 253 pounds, and since then, I've lost over 115 pounds, and my current weight is 150, and I've basically been plateaued at that weight for the past, I want to say two and a half months, and I'm perfectly fine, I'm not trying to like lose any more weight, I'm very comfortable with where I'm at with my weight loss and I'm very grateful. Now, before we hop into it, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional right now and I guess it's just because I'm reading my notes and I really just want to touch base on a lot of these different subjects. Why? Why am I getting watery eyed? Get your life together, Sarah. Get it together. Anyway, um, what the hell? The video hasn't even started. Why are your eyes watering? Get it together. Oh, okay. So the reason why I really just, I had to get myself together to make this video for you guys just because there's just been so much going on in the world. And, you know, I really hope that you guys are, you know, making out okay. I hope that your family's okay. Anyone that is still working while this pandemic is going on, you know, I'm so grateful for the work that you guys have been putting in. If no one has told you that, I am telling you that. And... I just really want to harp on the fact that there's just been so much going on and we have to reach out to our neighbors to make sure that they're okay. We need to make sure that our loved ones, our distant family members are okay, things like that, just because I I feel like it's it's so crazy what is going on. I can't even put it into words. I feel like it's a freaking dream. Like I don't even I don't feel that what's going on is real. Um, so I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I've been going through a lot. You may have seen me posting content and, you know, being very active. And that's something that I really want to do because I love creating content for you guys. I love interacting with you guys. You guys are like my family. Um, but my personal family, I have been going through a lot and, um, I just wanted to share that with you. So recently, um, my brother had gotten into a very serious motorcycle accident and had very serious injuries and things like that. And thank God he's okay. But he took our entire family for a shock, like especially because of the fact that he lives in Texas and majority of our main family members are from Jersey. And you know, I recently moved to Vegas. So with the pandemic that's going on, there was just really no way for us to just hop on the plane and just be in the hospital to be there for him so you know just like the stress and just like the uncertainty of things it's just it really did take a huge toll on us and then also um we just had like a crazy you know <laughs> occurring of life events like my um on the fourth was my baby sister's 12th birthday happy belated birthday naomi love you so much um, but on that same day, we also did lose Jaden's father and it's just, I don't think Jaden realizes how much it affects me. It's because like death, I handle death very strangely. Like, I don't know. Um, I just get very sad. Like it's like when I think of death and I think of, um, people that I love lo losing people that are so close to them. Um, I just automatically think of my mother and I lost my mother about two years ago and I know how that is affecting me as an individual and I just, I wouldn't want to wish that on anyone. Losing their 
someone that's very close to them, someone that has raised them, someone, you know, anyone that someone has loved so dearly. Like, I just, I can't explain to you that feeling. And it's such a sucky feeling. So, you know, rest in peace, Pop. You know, I just really wish that it didn't happen how it did happen. And, but there's just, these are just things that we can't change. Um, with Pop, we kind of, you know, expected it was going to happen soon because his health was just, you know, declining and I'm just happy that he's no longer suffering and we can now move forward from that. But with all that craziness that's going on, something that I do want to also mention is um, just moving into how my mental health and everything that has been happening in my life, how it's been affecting me now and especially with like my weight loss journey because your girl isn't staying on track and that's just me being honest with you. Um, there goes periods of time where I don't eat and there's periods of time where I'm eating everything, <laughs> everything I'm not supposed to eat. And I could literally sit here and just bawl my eyes about it because I get more frustrated with myself because I know better and I didn't go through all of this just to fall back into my same habits and things like that. But that's the reason why I'm making this video for you guys to just explain to you that we're freaking human beings. We're going to endure things in life. We're going to go through periods of time where we're stressing the hell out and you know, we're going back to our old habits. But the fact is, is that we need to really realize where it's coming from. So I want to start off with basically stating that something that you guys may not know about me i've never really been too open about this is that both of my parents were addicts so my mother she was a drug addict um may she rest in peace and then my father he's still currently an alcoholic now evidently addiction runs in my family it runs in previous relatives throughout my family too but we're not going to get all into that um but the thing is, is that that has opened up my mind to understanding why I have such a strong addiction to food, why food is always my coping mechanism, why I always turn to food to for just comfort. Like food is delicious, but more so it not being delicious, food has always comforted me. I've always turned to food because you know what? I realized growing up, I never had anybody else to turn to. If I had someone else to turn to, I may have not turned to food. Um, not stating that that's the reason why I'm doing it now. I'm just saying like understanding the why. Um, understand that if you are someone like me, um, an addiction runs in your family, it's very well possible that you have an addiction. Food addiction is real. And if no one has never told you that, I'm telling you that. It is real as hell. Um, and with that being said, I feel like one of the biggest things that I regret doing after getting this weight loss surgery is not continuing therapy. Um, I remember prior to getting the surgery when you had to go to therapy, um, I get emotional about this because I just think about certain things that people have said to me in my life. and. I just want to, before we, I just want to say this to someone out there because if you suffer from depression and anxiety and you feel like you go through shit, baby, you are not alone, okay? And it is okay. And you will be okay. And you don't have to belittle yourself or apologize to someone because you are at that mental state at that point in time. It is okay to cry. It is okay to feel bad. But the one thing that I say to you is to figure out the why and learn about yourself. Grow from it. Don't let that consume you. Don't make that you. And I feel like when I was going to therapy, that is something that has helped me like understand. Like in terms of the reason why, for instance, I'm sorry if I'm like all over the place, but the reason why I had to grow up so quickly and become an adult and become very mature is because I was taking care of my parents. My parents were addicts. Not necessarily my father, but my mother. Like, I was like her mother. You know, I was making sure that we ate. I was making sure that the bills were paid with my little allowance money that she would steal from me. Like, you know? And it's just something that 
I remember one of my ex-boyfriends explaining to me that he said that he couldn't be in a relationship with me because I suffered from depression, anxiety. So I have to share that with you guys because I know that there's someone out there telling you like therapy is not for you. Therapy is for how my family would say for like, I don't want to say it because I don't want to come off like I'm being racist or anything like that. But I'm black and white and my parents will always be like that's, that's for white people. And I'm just like what? Like mental health? is for what no if you want to take control of your mental health i definitely recommend seeking therapy seeking just someone to explain it to someone to talk to you um talk to you about the situation and basically what therapists do is they just put things in a different perspective for you because a lot of times I know for myself with my anxiety, I get so wrapped up in my head, I'm constantly thinking about the negative thing, I can't find myself to focus on a positive flip of that type of situation, if that makes sense. Because I'm so focused on, well this is what it is, this is what it is, this is what it's done to me, this is how I feel. But I've realized that it's not about that. You know, um, and that is something that I definitely noticed with having surgery. So after realizing that, I definitely feel that I need to go back to therapy. Now, I really do enjoy in-person therapy sessions, although I know with COVID and everything that's going on now, more so like the virtual online ones are probably gonna be the best bet. Um, but it is up to me to do the research. And the same thing for you is definitely just do research to see the therapist that you like. And it's okay if you're not comfortable with that first person. It's okay to go ahead and kind of like trial and error therapist because sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes it may not be a perfect fit for you um to give you guys a quick little story about my first time with a therapist um my therapist was so down to earth she was amazing um as soon as i walked in the room i was like <laughs> i said to her i was like just so you know if this relationship is going to work i'm going to let you know that i drop a lot of f-bombs i curse a lot that's just me and she was like lit <laughs> like she already knew she had no problem with that she was like cool it sounds good to me because I don't give a fuck, like pretty much, that's how she was, just like, I don't care. So I was like, all right, cool. So we hit it off very well. I learned so much throughout those sessions. And then, you know, I, I think I lost my health insurance or something like that. So I had to stop going. Um, but yeah, and I moved and it was just so much into that. So um, I definitely think that if anyone's out there considering therapy, definitely do it do it for you don't do it for anyone else and don't feel bad that you have to do it don't feel like you have to explain to anyone why you have to do it you know like i said it just is it's just about opening up getting your mental space cleared you know and that's what i really enjoyed about it so i'm uh, moving on to the next topic um and that's body dysphoria now I didn't know what the hell this was until Jaden um, actually started transitioning. So if you guys don't follow um, Jaden's journey, I'm going to make sure I put that down in the description box. It's Discovering Asha. Um, he's going to change it to One Day with Jay soon. But it's Discovering Asha and basically my partner has transitioned um, and basically start testosterone and he has introduced me and like explained to me more in depth his experience with body dysphoria and I didn't really know what it was called I just knew it was something that I mentally thought about myself when I looked at myself sometimes and it's very strange but it's something that you definitely experience after surgery and I talk to so many people and they tell me that even after losing all the weight, they still look at themselves and see themselves as that 200 plus pound person or that 300 plus pound person. And there's really no like, do this so you don't feel that way, like type of thing to tell you guys. But it is something that I personally experience. There's days that I wake up and I still feel like i'm 265 pounds and i look at myself like say for instance i'm going grocery shopping and i'm like outside walking and i can see myself in the reflection i just like look at myself and i'm like oh i'm skinny <laughs> okay that's me i'm like who's that or like if someone calls me tiny or they're like are you gonna stop losing weight or like or just whatever like if someone makes a, a comment that I'm smaller I'm just like no I'm not like I'm still a big piece like for some reason in my head I still feel like I'm a big piece so um 
it is something that I definitely need to work on. I feel like it's not necessarily affected me too negatively just because I'm learning to accept myself for what I am. And I feel like that is so important with like weight loss. Like you have to learn to love yourself the way you are as a bigger person and as you're losing the weight and that final person. And I feel like it's so much easier said than done, but if you don't love yourself when you're bigger in some sort of aspect, there may be things that you're not comfortable with. There may be things that you're, you don't like, but if you don't love yourself, or if you're having a hard time accepting that, which is something that I did, you know, if someone asked me when I was 265 pounds, do I love myself? Yeah, I love myself. But showing myself that, talking to myself like I love myself, um, even if it's mental, like when I say talk to myself, like if I'm looking at myself in a mirror, you don't sit here and the first thing that comes out of your mouth is something negative. Like, you know, you look at yourself and you're like, okay, I look good today. Like, you know, my, my body looks good. I feel good. Like my makeup looks nice. If you're sitting here and the first thing that's coming out of your mouth is negative, you know, you're not treating yourself with love. And I noticed as I was doing my journey that the more I talk to myself with respect and with love and not being so hard on myself, the more I actually started to embrace my little flaws. I'm like, yeah, your girl got a little pouch, like got a little, little extra skin. Like, I don't care, but look at me, look at the booty. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just start to embrace it more because you are just, you're human, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's very hard to explain, I feel, just because I'm just, I feel like I'm not good at explaining these types of things, but um, you have to learn to love yourself for who you are before you go ahead and start changing yourself. Whether that is with weight loss surgery and, you know, I decided to get weight loss surgery for more health reasons because I was in pain and, you know, there was things about myself that I love, but there was things about myself that I did want to change and I wanted to improve, so I worked on that. Um, and I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> Even though I lost the weight and I'm still, I'm kind of trying to maintain my weight now, mentally, that's where I'm working a lot. Um, and I feel like this is super important to just note because a lot of times after you get weight loss surgery, people love to get plastic surgery. And it's something that I'm also doing research on because there are certain things that I look at myself in the mirror and I'm not happy with my loose skin. I would prefer like a like a tummy tuck or I prefer to just get like you know the loose skin around my thighs chopped off especially like when I'm laying in bed just because I'm not comfortable with the way it looks and 110,000 reasons but the fact of the matter is is that something that I've learned along doing that research is that your body is not going to look the way you envision it mentally so like you're thinking that you're going to end up being a certain way but let me tell you when i was 265 pounds i did not think 150 pounds looked like this like i still look down at myself i'm like yo your fucking thighs are big and i'm just like but you're 250 like i get shocked every time i'm on the scale so it's like it's it's a very it's a very it's a mental game okay and my thing to you is just learn to love yourself for who you are learn to understand your flaws learn to know that you can work on them and you can change them before you go ahead and seeking surgeries and things like that because they're not quick fix because even after you do the nip and tuck you still have this to deal with so i definitely say work on your mental first um and that just wraps it up i want to just end this video because i don't want to make this forever long but some things that i've been working on to really help with my mental journey and i I have to just be honest with you guys because I always felt like, you know, when Jaden would tell me to do these things, I'm like, ugh, like whatever. But a couple of things that I have been doing is like I said, I've been seeking online therapy classes as well as I've been learning how I'm speaking to myself. So on my refrigerator, I actually have these post-it notes where I get these just daily quotes and reminders that I just jot down. I actually have this app on my phone. It's called the Motivation app and I constantly just get text messages throughout the day and they're just motivational quotes. And these are just things and like daily affirmations that I repeat to myself so that I can remind myself of my self-worth. Um, and it really does start with how you talk to yourself. And I've been learning that the hard way, to be honest, because I 
really talk to myself so nastily and I need to change that in order to see any type of improvement. Um, so aside from like daily affirmations, like I said, I do the post-it notes. You could put them in your bathroom or somewhere you're gonna see them. I'm always in the kitchen, so I figured that was like a perfect spot for me to put them. Um, but I've been doing that, and then when I do like makeup looks and stuff like that, I've been listening to audiobooks. One of the books that I've been re um, recently reading actually i haven't been listening to this guy is from russ and that one it's all it's called all it's all in your head and that is a really good book if you guys are interested in checking that out super cheap i'll link it down below russ is like an amazing um musical artist and he he's just amazing i love him so much he's a big inspiration to me and yeah, so I'm going to link that down below. Um, but other than that, talking to like, you know, your family and your loved ones and, you know, just being open and honest about how you're feeling, especially like with all the changes that you're going through, like losing the weight, the way we lose the weight. Some people lose it faster than others, but I literally lost 30 something pounds within a week. That mentally could really do a lot to you. Like, I felt sickly, I felt like I looked disgusting, I was like, why do I look like this? Why do I feel like this? Like, you know, it's just a lot. So I'm just explaining to you guys that it's super important to not only do the work physically, but do the work mentally. Understand that this is a lifestyle change and it is a mental game and it really does take a lot of mental work for you to learn to accept this amazing change that you're going to be going through. So. I'm not saying this video to scare anyone, I'm just making this video to be very honest and forward with you guys because it is something that I'm personally struggling with but I know that I'm going to be able to get through this. I know that we can all get through this and I just really hope that this video has touched a lot of you guys out there. Um, I hope that you guys gained some type of content from this video and if you did please give it a huge thumbs up. Please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, it helps me out so much. And if you guys made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys constantly show. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.